morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this YouTube video. Welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel for the newcomers. My name is Diddy, doing a short beach and talk walk this morning. Uh, Thursday, I had a huge party of my uh, friend Lex over here. He turned 50. He gave an awesome party here in Phuket and Beach and Bubbles. We had a lot of fun. So yesterday, uh, it was not really a day for me to make a video. <laughs> Still had a little bit of a hangover and my kids want to go to the cinema so i went to the cinema uh, later that day i went to the new uh, ant-man and the beast thing movie i love it a really cool movie uh, i had a lot of fun with the kids and you know it's always fun in thailand to go to the cinema because you have these chairs they're like they go real like you lay you're laying you're like you're sleeping almost like that uh, beautiful now guys um what about the bitcoin price did he uh, why are you always walking the beach? I just love to walk the beach. And that makes me zoom out on the Bitcoin price and zoom in and lie because I feel the sand in my feet and I really like that feeling. And you know, the Bitcoin price is all uh, cool to be discussing every time again. And you know, the charts and the TA and the short term, four hour, one hour. But in the end, you know, it really doesn't matter to me, guys. Uh, for me, it's a long term play. Um, I'm in Bitcoin already since 2013 when I started mining Bitcoin and now in 2017 when they're all in and for me I already now experienced in the last decade 10 years wow this is really deflationary this one is only going up up and up and that's exactly what I need my capital to do I don't want it to be inflationary I want to be able to buy more in the future instead of less because of holding my store of value Bitcoin so you consider your store of value still US dollars or euros, uh, but by now, slowly you start to realize, not really a store of value, is it? Can you still buy the same shit you could buy, buy like one year ago or five years ago with 10 bucks or 100 bucks? Of course not. You can buy less and less and less. And you all know it and you all see it, but still those magical numbers that are on your bank account, they fool you in believing that you still have 100k. No, my bank account says I still have 100k. Yes. But you don't look at it like, what can you buy for the 100k? And that's how I treat my capital. I always treat my capital like it needs to increase my buying power in the next couple of decades. And that is doing. And it's going to do that for the next couple of 10 years again. Because before 2030, Bitcoin will be way above 200, 300k. And then, you know, all the Bitcoins we have times that amount is a shitload of money for me and my family. And that's why they call it generational wealth, because at the end, I think Bitcoin will go higher and higher and higher till like 2140, when it becomes more stable and stable, because that's when the last Bitcoin will be mined. And then we create a complete new monetary system that I won't be there to see, because of course, I will be dead in 120 years. Or there needs to be some kind of a, a beautiful situation that I just witnessed yesterday in the cinema, uh, the end movie, because then they go from the earth down below into all these I don't even know how to call it like organism timeless escape system universe whatever you call it where time doesn't exist and yeah, then I can live another 120 years probably now shit what he's brabbling today okay sorry for that now go back to Bitcoin so for me Bitcoin is a long-term play guys I just want to keep adding Bitcoin every day to my portfolio do I play the trade game as well? Yes, I play the trade game. Do I only win? No, I not only win. I'm in a loss at the moment with two trades. I bought AR and Cardano, I think two, three days ago. Bam, and they are down and I did a small long on them. I don't care, you know, some you win, some you lose. But that's only on the part on the portfolio that you trade with. You know, the, the thing that you're winning on is the big part, it's the big part. The 80% of your capital is always in Bitcoin. That's the thing that you're winning on. Uh, the other thing that I want to talk about to you guys is uh, I got some questions because last time I the video I said okay uh, I went all in and people are asking me what is what was the most difficult part of going all in to be very honest I think the most difficult part of going all in was changing my mindset from being a materialist to a minimalist because we went all in uh, before the 2017 bull run so between $800 and 3 k we pushed in everything we had. Even my pension fund, even my kids' savings, everything went in. And from that moment, we went up, 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 bam. And then you go all the way up to 20 k And of course, you sell a little bit of a Bitcoin and you take a little bit of profit. But that is your first real hardcore bull run. So most of the capital stays in your 
uh, bitcoins and then bitcoin starts to crash back to 3k and at that moment when you're solely surviving on bitcoin you don't have any other assets then the life becomes more expensive because at that moment you're spending one to two bitcoins a month you know at the moment the bitcoin is 3k so if you don't live a minimalist lifestyle during the time of the bear market it is very difficult to overcome that first cycle that you need to ride out to become filthy rich, let's say the dead, or something else, how do you call it? But um, to, to make that first cycle of um, multiplying your capital so that you can enjoy the next couple of cycles in a different way. So that is the difference. And that was the hardest part for me from being a materialistic person to a minimalistic person because uh, you know we needed to live in Thailand in cheap islands in cheap houses like the backpacker places we didn't always live in these kick-ass villas that we are living in now when we started the adventure the goal was hodling as much as possible Bitcoin spending as less as possible to materialistic stuff and showing our kids that a minimalistic lifestyle can bring happiness as well we just want to teach our kids it's not all about accumulating materialistic stuff. You know, new clothes, new jewelry, new cars, new toys, new iPhones, new laptops. It was also about enjoying the other stuff in life. I'm gonna turn around, maybe then the image is a little bit less dark, guys. Yes, it's less dark. Sorry for the first darkish images. So that was the decision for us. And, um, and the combination of that, going all in, and surviving the first bear market because you're not spending a lot because you're teaching yourself and your children what it is to be a minimalistic that's the combination that made us survive the first bear market and then in the next bull run of course um, everything took off we went all the way to 60k and uh, with bitcoin and yeah by then of course you started to earn some bitcoins every month because you make this beautiful passive income out of everything that we do, out of the videos that we make, out of the books that we that I wrote and sell, out of the t-shirts that we sell, out of the social media affiliate links, everything, you make some bitcoins every month. So we kind of created a complete new lifestyle from a normal office job lifestyle with our own company, blah, 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 all the way into this digital nomad lifestyle while holding the bitcoins and making sure that we will be able to hold bitcoins for the next floor. And I think that is exactly what the people now should be doing again as well. We are in the bear market. In my opinion, we already saw the bear market bottom. It was around 15,600, of course. Some people still waiting for 12K. I don't see that play. I see that that was the bottom. So for me, people that now sell their house or sell all their like materialistic stuff that they really don't need to go into Bitcoin, you should be going into Bitcoin now and you should just not spend as much because now Bitcoin is still not at the value that you should be spending a lot. You should wait for one half year, 2024, 25. Just live like one or two years, like most people don't want to live, to be able to live like 50 years like everybody wants to live. That's kind of the secret of Bitcoin. Maybe. Just take one or two steps back, and then after you take one or two steps back, you can go and sprint forward again together with a beautiful bull run. And then you can spend some sets and sets more and more and more. But don't spend those sets in the bear market. That is one of the reasons that why we went to Thailand, guys. Of course, we want to meet our friends and the whole crypto community again because we lived in Thailand for many years, every winter. But we didn't see them for more, more than two years because of the whole fucking flu situation. Finally, Thailand became smarter and opened the border, so we were able to come. And, but also the second reason is that we thought it would be cheaper to live here than in Europe. To be very honest at the moment, uh, Phuket is like almost equal to Portugal, because I think Portugal is one of the more cheapest countries in Europe. So yeah, I think Phuket is almost equal. And like the food will be cheaper in Thailand. I think the housing on Phuket is more expensive now than the housing in, the, in, in Portugal. I think that one is now cheaper. Um, you know, so it's like almost equal, uh, like almost equaling out when it comes to spending and monthly budget. I think Portugal and Phuket at the moment are the same. So we're not saving that much this bear market because of moving to Phuket. But still, we are winning a lot because we finally get to know, we finally get to meet the whole crypto community again, you know, and, and, and finally talk again to people that are on the same mindset 
and also on the same ideas, philosophies about life, and also that want to explore the opportunities in this whole blockchain Bitcoin industry. And I tend to flourish more when I surround myself with people that are motivating, inspirational, and wanting to change the world to a better place. In many places that you can stay, you're mostly surrounded with people that will pull you back. Ah, that's dangerous. Ah, that's not possible. Ah, watch out, you mustn't do that. No, nah, Bitcoin, that will be difficult to uh, survive. It won't be money, blah, blah, blah. You know, you need to surround yourself with people that have the same drive in changing the world for the better and taking the power back from all those fucking centralized entities into the hands of the people again. And that's my opinion of what is the most important goal for Bitcoin at the moment. It's already money. It's already proven to be money. We spend Bitcoin daily all over the world. The people still are saying, you oh, know, it's not money. It is money. I'm sending it to everyone all over the world without that I need to ask anyone to how to do it. You know, I am Noster nowadays. It's a new version of Twitter created by Jack Dorsey. You know, on Noster, I can send like 10 cents, 20 cents, just to someone on the other side of the world if he has Noster as well. I don't need bank account. I don't need centralized entities. If every business on this, in this world now we have a Noster wallet, I could just pay them every time with Noster, like beep, 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 sending sets all over the world. And that is the revolution of Bitcoin, still to me. Fuck those centralized entities that want to fucking control all our lives, all our children's lives, my mind, my kids' mind, and all that stuff. We don't need that. We have a complete, beautiful, decentralized alternative called Bitcoin uh, on the build on a technology blockchain that is a revolution in a peaceful way, a revolution in technology in a peaceful way, that will make it possible for us people to take control again. Yes, let the governments make laws and all that stuff. That's what they are good at, maybe. Even that, I doubt. They should make the laws in the blockchain as well. Also the voting and all that other stuff. Like, step by step, let's first start with small things. Disrupting the complete monetary system into a system that is like more trustful, open, transparent, and like there for everyone. And not just for those 1% suits that want to control everything. The thing that you also need to realize, guys, is very simple. Like, those centralized entities that I was talking about, they are the ones that made you materialistic. It's not the core of people to be materialistic. We are happy living in the jungle. We are happy living on the beach. We are happy living anywhere without stress. But those centralized entities create this beautiful marketing machine that made you want everything there that is new. And that made you in and that turned you into a very materialistic person you want the newest iphone you want the newest car you need the newest house you need new furniture you need new clothes because else if you don't wear that brand you don't feel home at the people that you're surrounded with so but that's all controlled by those centralized entities that i'm always talking about guys you know it's like one or two percent of the big companies like you know blackrock Vanguard and all those huge companies that control all the world, that control all the media, that control all the marketing, control like have a share in all other huge companies in the world that you use in a daily base, from clothing to traveling to food to everything. And they make you to want more, more, more every time. They turned you into this consuming monster in the 90s that is like never satisfied with what it has always something new always something more always something different and the turn of that is for me bitcoin and blockchain is the fight against those centralized entities it's not only against the monetary system it's also against exactly what i just described i don't want to be controlled anymore or influenced anymore by a group of people that is only influencing me to make more money why would I want to be influenced by people that only wants to make more money out of me by making me some kind of number that's running around the globe and spending as much as possible uh, after paying tax, of course, because they first take your tax, then you can spend some more on their products. Um, why would I like want to be influenced by that? So that is why my fight to centralized entities is as big as well. And it's not always easy as a family with puber kids because they of course look TikTok, they of course look all the social medias and all the influencers that are showing the newest goods, the biggest presents and all the stuff. So yes, it's difficult um, to turn minimalistic in that way, but still it's possible. And, and you should try it just for one year. Just try for one year how it is to live without buying 
all that newest, coolest stuff that you always want to buy and spend that one on more like beautiful experiences with your family. That is why as well the fight to centralize entities for me is that big, guys. And that was, I think, everything for today. I'm going to keep it short because today we're going to do another beautiful fun day. I'll make a video about that as well. First, going home, now editing this, and then uh, you will see the result. If you like that result, then give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and uh, let me know in the comments what you think about that mindset, what you think about going all in, what you think about minimalistic uh, versus naturalistic lifestyles. Thank you for watching. See you probably tomorrow again if I'm up to it on Sunday. And if not, see you Monday. And...